Okay, so this is a presentation, an orientation session on the Associates of Arts and Sciences in the Liberal Arts. And uh, the, what is currently the Associate of Arts and Sciences in Liberal Arts with the Communication Specialization. And I'll also mention the Fine Arts Specialization. So I'm Margaret Ross. I'm a full-time philosophy professor here at Lord Fairfax. And I'm also the lead coordinator for the Liberal Arts degree. So let me jump right in and talk a little bit about this degree program. And I have a little presentation. There it is. Maybe. Yes. Okay. Okay. So basically, what are the liberal arts? What is this kind of program? The liberal arts are really what we would think of as sort of traditional higher education. That is the traditional basis for a college education. And they, they are called the liberal arts. That phrase goes back to the Middle Ages. And um, the reason it's called that is that uh, not for sort of political reasons, but they're called the liberal arts because they were intended for free people. That is for adults who make their own decisions and are autonomous and have the ability to structure their own lives. So that was sort of the original point. That sounds a little bit vague. Um, but basically the liberal arts focus on general knowledge and academic skills rather than necessarily very specific professional knowledge. So the idea is that you are really developing the basic skills uh, for whatever it is that you're going to pursue later. So for example, basically logical, rational skills, thinking critically, um, being able to see problems and issues from multiple perspectives, being able to evaluate different perspectives on things, um, a big focus on written and oral communication. Can you um, articulate your thoughts clearly to other people? Uh, and a broad understanding of a variety of disciplines, including history and natural sciences and the social sciences and math and so on. I think that one of the important things that comes out of a liberal arts education is the idea of learning how to learn. Right? If you are an independent learner, if you know how to um, absorb knowledge and how to evaluate it and analyze it, then you will do well no matter what profession you go into. So the liberal arts really create the sort of basis for higher education in general. Um, and so, but at LFCC, we have this very specific program. So our liberal arts program is a two-year program. It's a transfer degree. The idea is that you will go on to a four-year school where you may not major in the liberal arts. You may major in something else. So at our school, the liberal arts degree is especially intended, um, not necessarily exclusively intended, but especially intended for people who would like to go to a four-year school and then major in humanities or social sciences. That's primarily who this program is geared toward. So for example, humanities such as philosophy, religious studies, English, communications, foreign languages, history, um, and social sciences like sociology, psychology, anthropology, and so forth. Um, and then the fine arts, right? Visual arts, narrative arts, music, film, and so on. So primarily, we're, the idea is that you would take this program, you will transfer to a four-year school, and you will probably major in one of those things. If you don't end up majoring in one of those things, you, this is perfectly fine. It will not harm you in any way. Okay. There are, I do want to point out there are some professional benefits of studying the liberal arts. That's not always obvious because you are not getting a degree in some very specific professional concern, like this is not a degree in accounting or a degree in elementary school teaching or a degree in nursing or so on. Um, what the liberal arts really give you is a wide array of skills that employers value. Right? Employers don't just want people who can perform a very specific task. They want people who can express themselves, who can problem solve, who can communicate with, with other people in a productive way. And so a lot of employers actually value the liberal arts. Um, it also gives you, I think, two things that are pertinent to the, our current um, employment situation, and that is that the liberal arts will offer you some flexibility in a changing job market. So we're increasingly in our society seeing people who uh, decide or end up having to change careers sort of midlife. Um, a more flexible degree could help you with that, right? 
Um, these also tend to be skills, if you sort of look back at this slide, a lot of these skills are things that cannot be done by robots, at least not yet. <laughs> okay. um, critical thinking and looking at things from multiple perspectives and communicating fully with other human beings um, are not the kinds of things that are going to be replaced by automation, at least not probably within our lifetimes. So there is potentially some job security there, right? Um, there's also some studies about uh, the effectiveness of liberal arts majors to, in career advancement later, right? These kinds of jobs do not always have the start highest starting salaries, but they do tend to outperform um, some other jobs that have higher salaries initially, outperform them in terms of uh, employees advancing in their careers, getting promotions and getting raises. So um, do keep that in mind. You can find some research on that. Uh, this is also a really solid preparation for graduate school. So if you have it in mind that you're going to go into humanities and social sciences and you already sort of know in your mind that you will probably uh, go on and get a master's or get a PhD, um, this kind of program is a, is a good solid preparation for that because it's giving you the skills that you need in that kind of environment. Okay. So, yeah, so this is what I'm going to focus on here and I will let my colleague talk about um, the next program. But I wanted to just point out some things about the curriculum and show you where you can find that. I'm sure you've, if you've already enrolled in this program, I'm sure you have looked at it, um, but it is nice to just point out to you where this is. So LFCC's online catalog, you can find it at this web address. And I will go there really quickly, or not so quickly. Um, Sorry. Well, I was going to go there. Okay, there we go. I'm sorry. We are all experiencing new things with Zoom. I know. And I, uh, yeah, it's like no matter how many times I do this, there we go. Uh, so hopefully you can see uh, this is the college's website. So this is the place where you go to find uh, the actual lists of courses you will need to take. So this is programs of study. You would scroll all the way down um, to humanities and art. And this is the liberal arts, uh, the transfer degree, the one that we're talking about. So if you click on that, you can see the complete program curriculum. So basically what you have here are a variety of requirements such as um, SDV, student development courses. You have two semesters of English comp uh, composition, mathematics, a communications elective, information literacy, phys ed, and so on. And then there are a lot of electives, right? So fine arts electives, history, and several electives in the social sciences and humanities because that's presumably what you're preparing for. There is also a foreign language requirement for this degree, which is one of the things that sets it apart uh, from a general studies degree. If you want to go into humanities and social sciences, you will probably be required, um, if you get a bachelor's degree in that, you will probably be required to have at least two semesters of foreign language. So we're trying to give you that so that you don't have to do it when you get there. Okay, and so that's pretty much what the degree looks like. It has some requirements and it also has a lot of electives with some flexibility for you to take different kinds of courses and look at what you might like, what you might like to go into and what seems most interesting to you. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna turn this over to my colleague, um, Professor Stefanowski, and she's going to talk about the communication specialization. Thank you, Margaret. So, right, I'm Christy Stefanowski, and I teach here at LFCC in the Communication Studies Department. So, um, when you hear Communication Studies, you might think, you know, what is that? So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Communication Studies is, what it entails, and as Margaret talked about, uh, really, you're going to get so many great job skills. So, with communication specialization, what you're looking at is to be a well-rounded communicator in every situation. So um, uh, one of the skills that employers are looking for is can you communicate effectively with your colleagues, with um, people you're going to be working with, whether it's orally or whether it's written. And uh, as Margaret alluded to, uh, hopefully this is something that won't be taken over by robots, but this is something that we need to do 
um, whether it's via Zoom, whether it's face-to-face. -face. And so no matter what discipline or no matter what job you want to go into, communication studies just uh, will be a great asset for you because most employers want someone who can communicate effectively. They can teach you how to use their, their um, processes, but they want to make sure that you can come in and communicate effectively. So um, when we look at communication studies, uh, one thing that we look at here at LFCC is to make sure that you can take what you learn and uh, transfer it to a four-year university, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But I want to talk about a couple of the courses that you'll be taking um, and then some of the jobs that you could possibly get. Because of course, we're in college, we want to get a great job. So um, some of the courses that you'll be taking would be something like public speaking. Uh, so that would be um, speaking in a situation to a large group of people. You could also be taking things like intercultural communication, which would be speaking to people who are different than you, which is everyone, right? Males, females, um, different cultures, different religions. It's so important in our world today. Um, and that is something that employers are uh, really wanting. Um, you might be taking something like small group communication. So can you communicate effectively within a group? Uh, which will certainly help you within your classes, but also when you get a job, you'll absolutely be working with um, other people in your job. So when we talk about communication studies, it's kind of broken down into a few things. And another reason why communication studies is so great is if you're not really sure what you want to do with the rest of your life, which is okay, uh, but you think, you know, I really maybe want to go into radio, or maybe I think TV is very cool, or maybe I'm a great writer, or I just like to talk to people. And so with communication studies, it's kind of broken down into media, it's broken down into writing, and it's broken down into something public relations or marketing related. So I want to show you, and I'm going to share my screen, so it might take a minute here. Um, I want to show you some of the jobs that you could possibly get. Now, this, of course, is not uh, an exhaustive list, but these are some of the things that LFCC has put together, and you'll be able to find it uh, on the website the way that Margaret showed you how to get into the specialization. But if we look at something like advertising and promotions, here it gives you a great idea of maybe your salary, but also some of the things that you can do. And over, overall, everything, it's so important to be a great communicator. You know, you go into the, um, you go into try to get the job and um, they, they want to make sure that you can communicate with whomever you're going to be working with. So you've got marketing, public relations, you're dealing with people. Um, I want to show you, so that's kind of like the public relations part of it. Um, there's also radio and television. So when you go into communication studies, you can think, I'm not really sure what I want to do, but maybe something with the media. So now, of course, you've got online media, you've got television, but it's not just the announcers that you see and hear, it's also behind the scenes. So you can go into more of a media studies, which would be uh, the producers, the announcers, um, different things like that, uh, broadcast news analysts. So that would be more somebody that's on TV or on the radio. You can go into reporting and journalism. Of course, you'd want to be a great communicator, writer, and speaker, right? And then um, going to the third part, you've got different writers and things, if you see here. Um, they've also got, um, uh, oh, I guess I kind of already said it, the in front of the, um, in front of the cameras. You know, some people think they want to get in front of the cameras, which is great. So you can do that online, on the radio, on TV, and any other kind of media. So again, when you think of communication studies, and I'm gonna stop sharing this, when you think of communication studies, you really wanna think about being a well-rounded communicator um, in a written and oral sense, also a well-rounded communicator with everyone. Um, your peers, people who are older than you, people who are younger, people who are different than you, people who are the same as you. So you really want to think about different situations, different uh, communication events that you'll be in. Um, but no matter what career path you go into, Communication studies will never be bad for you. Um, if you want to go into business or law or anything, taking communication classes um, will only benefit you because you'll become a better, more effective communicator. Um, so now, uh, Margaret and I will both talk about kind of the transfer of these. Uh, one thing that we at LSCC really strive for is we know that most of our students 
will be transferring to a four-year college or university. So we really try to map, to map out the classes that will benefit you the most and that you can take into your uh, four-year college or university seamlessly um, so that you will get credit for those and so that also it will benefit you. So for example, if you take a public speaking class with us, uh, you may go into an advanced public speaking class if you go into that route um, in your college or university. That's just an example. Um, so these are very great classes to get you kind of looking at the discipline and deciding, hey, maybe this is what I want to do. Um, so Margaret, if you'd like to speak to that a little bit with your transfer. Sure, yeah, so I wanted to just say some broad things about transferring. I'm going to go back to this. Oh, oh no, wait. I just totally hit the wrong button there. All right, so, right, so the transfer process, the, the, the main, um, your sort of main connection or sort of point of entry for dealing with the transfer process is the advising office, right? They know everything about this. They can guide you through it. Um, that is one of the main things that they're there for. You should not be shy about being in contact with them continually over the course of your two years here. Uh, the LFCC has a really great uh, website um, right here that goes over all of the details of the transfer process and so on. I think the one, the thing that I wanted to had mentioned is that one of the great advantages of going to uh, one of the community colleges in the Virginia system, including LFCC, is that we have 39 uh, guaranteed admission agreements. So we have agreements of guaranteed admission with 39 colleges and universities. And every college or university has its own set of criteria for what that means. But the idea is that if you meet that criteria, they are guaranteeing that you can get into their bachelor's degree programs. So my recommendation, um, just personally, is to start thinking now about where you would like to transfer. You don't have to necessarily know what exact school you want to go to, but kind of narrow it down and get a sense for what, you, what you're interested in. Uh, where you would like to go. And then this website here, I won't click on it, but I'll just sort of leave it here. You can, if you're watching this, you can type it out or something. Um, basically gives you um, all of those agreements and they are written in a legalistic kind of way. But basically what the agreement says is that if you complete a transfer degree at LFCC and you maintain a certain minimum GPA, they're guaranteeing you acceptance. Um, so that's really probably what you want to aim for. And so I would pick a couple of schools and sort of that you think you want to go to and look at those agreements and, and, and then go to advising and discuss exactly what you need to do. Um, but get a sense for here's what I'm aiming at. Here's what I need to do to get where I want to be in two years. A couple of just sort of notes on that. Um, as Christy was saying, we try very hard to design our degree programs to be as transferable as is humanly possible, right? Um, but every college and university has a little bit of a different idea about what they want to accept for transfer or not. So just as a note, the guaranteed admission, what that does is it guarantees that you will be allowed into a bachelor's degree program. It doesn't guarantee that every course you've taken will transfer. And this is where I really recommend working with the advising department and having a sense for which schools you want because sometimes they have preferences. So one school may insist that you should take an ethics course and they won't transfer something else. Another school may say there's a particular type of math you have to take. So when, in other words, when you have electives within your curriculum, so we saw a few minutes ago, there's math electives and history electives, be sure that you're taking the ones that your school prefers. Right? And again, you find that out through the advising office. The other thing that um, is worth noting is that we frequently throughout the year have visits from uh, admissions people from those colleges. So, you know, check your school email, keep an eye out for visits from those people. You can schedule a time to sit down with them and look at your transcript and talk about what you need to do to transfer to their college. So that's a really good idea to, um, to do that and meet with those people when that's available. Yeah, great advice. Um, so I guess uh, if there's nothing else, if there's any questions or 
uh, if anyone has questions, um, definitely go see advising, or you can certainly reach either one of us or anyone within our department uh, via the LFCC website. Um, please don't hesitate to reach out. It's easier to get everything started in the beginning than to try to play catch up after you've already taken a few courses. So best of luck. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Margaret, anything else you want to add? I don't have anything to add to that. All right. Well, wonderful. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you. And best of luck. All right. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Margaret. Um, we are going to post this recording. Uh, and uh, for any students that watch this recording, make sure that you check out. I'm going to put a link up on the screen here in a second. Make sure that you submit uh, an entry to win an iPad mini, AirPods, or Nintendo Switch. Uh, just incentive for attending these awesome pathway sessions. Uh, our winners will be announced on Monday, August 24th. So just go to the link and check that out. And everyone have a great day.